And welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Bannerman Abyss. It's going to be our first deck of the day. We got four brand new decks today that all should be a lot of fun. Uh, so we're going to be playing a, a deck, you know, a Bannerman mid-range deck where, you know, with just regular Demacia cards, challengers, all that kind of stuff. Now, you know about Bannerman decks, they're good at curving out, but they're top end of the Bannerman deck. Sometimes you run out of cards, like that happens with these Demacia mid-range decks. So to try to counteract that, what we have in here is the Howling Abyss at the top end. So taking another uh, crack at playing a Howling Abyss deck. Um, this deck, so, you know, like we're going to be curving out, trying to get ahead, and then if our opponent's starting to stabilize, boom, we play this landmark, and now suddenly we're getting a bunch of level 2 champions that can hopefully end the game for us. Also got a couple unyielding spirits here, um, because of just how good that card is with kind of everything, and then um, our 5 mana card, our other failure card, is going to be Trundle, because Trundle's just awesome. <laughs> Basically, that's why we're playing Trundle, it's just super powerful. So we got a couple of those in here as well. Um, Egghead Researcher is going to be in here creating some random dragons for us and just getting another body in here because with we have six ones, nine twos. With a Bannerman deck, you want to be able to go wide and uh, put a lot of bodies into play, and that's what Egghead Researcher can also help, help us do. All right, so let's give it a try. We're going to play Bannerman Abyss. We're going to go play it over in Ranked. Um, we're going to play five games over there. But yeah, our schedule looks pretty good today. We got Lulu Darius, Shen Diana. Just some combinations of cards that you don't normally see. And then Zombie Trundle. So we got another Fiora deck mirror match, but they got Shen. They got the popular Fiora deck right now. So I like Egghead Researcher, and you know, like we're gonna want bodies and curve out, but I'm not sure if we want a 1 3 body against Fiora. Not sure if we want that. Um, maybe we should just keep it. I'll just keep it. Because I'll feel bad if we don't have anything cheap to play. Okay, well, looks like this is what we got. So we're just mulligating single combat for War Shafts, it looks like. Yeah, basically, Trundle's just really good. You know, it has the Overwhelm. You can grow it with Bannerman. You can put an Unyielding Spirit on it. It's just a really good card. We're going to hopefully get to the five mana Challenger Dragon a bunch with the Egghead Researcher. That's probably the, ch the dragon that we want more than others. Water changes but never breaks. Um, I don't want that. If the problem with playing War Chefs is they get a free attack. I don't want them getting a free attack. So I guess we play Bright Steel Protector. Break their spirits and their souls. You're covered. I demand hardly fair. I don't think I have a good option against that. It's like I could single combat have like my Price Seal Protector fight. Like I could have had like the Egghead Researcher fight, but then they they still just draw a spell. I think single combat's too valuable to use in that respect for myself. These woods protect their own. I taste purple. It's absolutely stellar. Engulf them. So they probably have repost. No closer. Nature blesses her followers. So, yep, it was your post. Okay. Alright, so they draw another spell, but that thing goes away. I still have my challenger to challenge the Green Glade Caretaker. Show them what we're made of. 
So I could go pump pump up with war shafts for a post, kill Scythria. But then they get to block my war shafts, so I'm trading war shafts and repost for Scythria. If I go Bannerman, if I go Bannerman, I'm just like having tracker challenge caretaker. War shafts being a 1-3 is a big bummer. Just being a 1-3 is a big bummer. If Warshafts was a 2-3, then, then I definitely would have gone the Repose line. trading away two of my cards for just one of theirs. Oh man, not even getting one of theirs. But things are too small. Warsh us being a 1-3 has just really, really hurt us this game. By my honor, you must die. I walk the space between worlds. Harry, repost, you are a My father's blade. Don't like our chances here. We could definitely use some of our top end. You know, we could, you know, like the howling of best would be nice. Trundle or something. We're gonna need some top end. Okay, got a trundle. Their top end's a little bigger though. King of Trolls coming through. Screeching Dragon, Sithria, Shen, Bright Seal Formation, just a lot bigger than the stuff I'm playing. I shouldn't even play the trundle there, but it doesn't matter. We're not beating that. We lost focus. Mid-range mirror matches. And this is just super true with Demacia. The, de the deck that goes bigger is the deck that's going to win. Because they're just going to have the more powerful effects and they're going to be winning. Like, that's... Because, like, neither of our decks are going to be going underneath the other one, right? Like, we're not going to out-aggro that other deck. It's just never going to happen. And so them going bigger, you know, and like that, that doesn't mean that, that we always lose the decks that go bigger. It's just when you're playing like mirror kind of matches, like where they have very similar or the same kind of cards, you need to be the deck that goes bigger in these mid-range matchups. But that also means that we should be a little bit, since we are lower to the ground, we're going to be, you know, there's, there's pluses and minuses. We're going to be better against other decks that are lower to the ground. Also, because we're going to be able to match up with them better. So this is a deck that goes lower to the ground. So maybe we'll match up against this deck better than the previous deck would have been able to. Because we'll be able to get blockers out earlier. With a little time, I'll have a breakthrough. No, they're not a totally different deck. I pull the strings. No, we're both we're both mid-range decks. You know, Demacia based mid-range decks trying to outgrind opponents. These are all three power with fearsome. We need a fearsome blocker. I'll go with the Bright Steel Protector to be able to trade over Fiora trading. All right, so they went in and attacked anyway. Let me trade with Elise there. That 
That's a great draw. We get to play that before playing Fiora. It's like they may play another Elise. They would fall by my blade. Strike quickly, strike deftly. Try me. And yes, they could have a one damage thing that kills my Fiora, but I hope not. I think that it's still it's worth getting using all the removal and clearing all those things out. Come closer. And that's why they attacked the least. They had a backup. Now you've gone and upset it. Um Let's see waiting for Bright Steel Protector on our attack turn. So we just play Bannerman. Safeguard our citizens. Oh, I didn't really think about researcher attacking. Yeah, I guess I should have. There's no reason not to. Could have got one point of damage in. Don't back down. What? I don't think my opponent knows how Vanguard Bannerman works. I don't believe they realize how Vanguard Bannerman works. Soldiers, to me. I never hold oh like if I'm them, I'm probably I'm just taking the Egghead Researcher and just getting a dragon. If if they have nothing else to do. Going deep. We're going deep. I like all these cards, but we need to curve out. So I guess we're going to take out these. Keep repost. No, we'll, just, we'll look at them all. Because we, we do need to curve out. None of those cards. We're curving out. But these cards, War Chefs, Fiora, these cards are curving out. Honestly, playing Fiora doesn't make the most sense here. I'll write my own story. Because there are three there are three mana like unless they would just play like the one four, then then playing Fiora would make sense. But I assume since they didn't play anything on turn one or didn't play anything on turn two, they want to play a three mana card. And against the three mana cards. Um, against the three mana cards. I would be challenging them with Fleet Feather Tracker and not Fiora anyway. So that just attacks for an, an additional point of damage. Playing the two of those. I will tend this garden. And now they play Maokai into a Fiora they don't know about. Feel the sizzle! I still like pumping up the Fleet Feather Tracker because I don't want one damage spells to kill it. All right, so they're taking seven. They are down to three. Let's get a cool dragon. I'm something of an aspiring ecologist. That's a pretty cool dragon. And so we're basically going to be casting Concerted Strike, kind of no matter what this turn, because then we'll just have Howling Abyss on turn seven and Mind Splitter on turn eight. So hopefully they give us something good to Concerted Strike. Hmm. 
I guess dead blue water. I'm actually here. Blood and guts, golden glory. Probably the dead blue water. Keep them from healing their nexus. And challenge one of these things, whatever. Challenge any of them. I don't care. Pump up the warshafts. What a specimen. Alright, GG's. Two and one. <laughs> I know. We killed our opponent before Howling Abyss. We were, I was gonna be casting Howling Abyss that turn. But they conceded. So now we have another mirror type match, another Demacia mid range aggro kind of deck. We'll see if we can handle it or not. Not sure about that egg. I just, you know, Mulligan the Egghead Researcher, but I don't know. Maybe I should be keeping it. Playing it on turn two. Keeping Bright Seal Protector for later. I'd rather have War Chefs on turn two. The Akad Researcher should probably be something else. Like um, like the five mana Challenger Dragon. Or Genevieve Elmhart. Or six mana Cythria. We should probably be playing one of those cards. I'll write my own story. Instead of Egghead Researcher. Yeah, just use aggro with one and two damage units. That's all we need. Grizzled Ranger. Yeah, that, that would work too. Um, do we want to trade da damage? So, like, obviously I get to Warshafts, pump this up thing up to be a 3-3 the next turn. I don't think I want to trade damage. I think that even if it's us taking two damage and them taking three damage, best case scenario... I think that's still kind of favors them. They're probably going to be much more damage based and aggressive than us. We'll just trade one drops instead. Who's on top of the bounty board today? Yuck. Good higher gun. War chefs. Why can't you be a two three? I'm one of the good guys, but not that good. Hmm. By my honor, you must die. Don't stand in my way. Yeah, so I got two options here. Uh, Bannerman pumping up Fiora just to be a 4-4 to be able to challenge and trade. Or Bright Steel Protector giving the barrier. Either way, one damage... A one damage thing will kill, like a make it rain, will kill all my kill stuff. So I can just challenge and kill both of their things, but then make it rain kills both of mine. So if if I do that, if I challenge and kill both of those and leave them vulnerable to make it rain, then we will have. I'm gonna just do this. Then we'll have four cards, they have four cards. But with me having Bannerman, I don't want to trade stuff. Now, Misfortune's too valuable. We gotta kill Misfortune, so we're gonna try this. But I want to keep these things alive for Bannerman. Right. Three damage on my protege, one damage on their Misfortune, and a card. It's a, it's a good trade. On its surface. I've lost. There's plenty of killing left. Wow, that hurts because that's a lot of attacking now. All right, good turn for them. I serve my people with pride. Dragon, such fascinating. Three mana dragon. I shoot. They, 
My point of playing Egghead Researcher here was so that they would not attack with Misfortune, but they still attacked with Misfortune. What is this? So we're doing this. Oh my gosh, that's why. Love ya. Yeah, GG's. Rice Seal Protector doesn't matter against the... because the, basically because of Misfortune. It doesn't really help. I probably needed to play it at the end of turn just to be able to be a blocker for the next turn. Yeah, I was saying I was saying pre-combat. I wanted to play the one three pre-combat to be able to block misfortune. Yeah, all right. I need to play it after combat though. I just kind of passed, but yeah, I need to play it after combat. I should have just another bright. I guess you're right, because yeah, if I would have had that bright seal protector in, then I wouldn't have been able to protect my screeching dragon with that repose. And then they'll have the fourth attack with misfortune. So yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, Ranger's resolve just killed me. I need to play around it. At least one of the two times, and I didn't either time. I think if I would have done that, if I would have been, if I would have just played around Rage Resolve one of the two times, I think we could have won that game. Yeah, they did have an amazing hand. They did. You know, Tracker, Hired Gun, Misfortune, a bunch, you know, a bunch of Rangers Resolves, the Jagged But, you know, Make It Rain, Jagged Butcher. Yeah, like, their hand was awesome. But still, I, I think I should have won that game. Would have just blocked differently or, or had Fiora challenge Misfortune. Either way. I don't know why. I shouldn't be just attacking right here. I didn't mean to. Uh, I meant to play other stuff. <laughs> Weird. That happens to me sometimes, of like, uh, me talking. And then I've heard... Forget to play other stuff before, like, yeah, I should have definitely played something else before combat there. Ugh. So, they didn't play the one damage thing, and that kind of makes me feel like they have Avalanche. Because they didn't kill Fleet Feather Tracker, so I didn't want to just, like, double spell the one drops. I, I want to try to play around Avalanche. So we played the three health thing. It's like now they're gonna use the one health thing on there. You know. I'm not. I don't think I play around another avalanche. I'm actually here. I think we just get our things in play and just hope they don't have a second avalanche. Oh, come on. Second Avalanche just destroys us, but I think we have to just go wide. I long for a worthy opponent. Batter him! Can't fight on an empty stomach! Second Avalanche destroys us. This is where we need the Howling Abyss to refill our top end. This would be a really good game to draw the Howling Abyss, for sure. And it's game five, that'd be that'd just be perfect. Hopefully we find the Howling Abyss this game. On turn seven. Safeguard our citizens. 
All right, so we know that the Abyss is not on top, so it's got to be the second card. Withering Whale. So they could have just killed multiple things with Withering Whale, but got greedy. We're now the War Chefs buff up the Tracker. I like that. I think that, yeah, War Chefs is a 1-2, but it gives him and his supported ally plus one, plus one. I like that. I think that'll be better. So they're taking seven. Let's see. So this is seven, eight, nine, thirteen. So Repose would be sixteen, would put them to one. So probably not worth it. Howling Abyss. Okay, that's that's a good one. We can get a really good dragon. I cannot be Satan. Ask me about dragons. I just may have an answer. Nah. You'd think that if we got the most expensive dragon, it'd be the best one, but not so much. Flavor and spice. I'll follow where I can. Head to the base. Try me. One banner, one destiny. I'm not gonna play around ruination. I'd you know think about whether or not to. Looks like they have ruination. Yeah, not the best dragon for us. I wanted the Eclipse Dragon. That that would be the best one. Howling Abyss would still be a great draw. I guess I should be going for the Fury thing because of Troll Chant. Okay, I just had Flash Freeze. Wouldn't have mattered. This would have been a great game for the Howling Abyss. Would have been a great game for the Howling Abyss. Learn, change, re-engage. That's too bad. They kept on having the right answers. The second Avalanche was a killer, and then obviously they had the the Ruination as well, and then they had the Frostbite cards. Yeah, all three Flash Freezes. So. That's too bad. They had exactly what they needed. Oh man, the Unyielding Spirit against that deck? Like, think if we would have had Unyielding Spirit. That would have been, like, yeah, that would have been amazing. So either Howling Abyss or Unyielding Spirit, one of either of these cards in that, you know, that whole game in the first seven turns would have won that game. For sure. 
would have just had one of those two. Um, so yeah, real yeah, real shame we didn't get to because that's that's just like the perfect thing. So like that's you know like these Demacia decks they can struggle against Ruination, right? Like that's like that kind of stuff of of just like clear out all your things and then you you run out of cards. That's that's something that Demacia decks do, and so that's why we're playing the Howling Abyss. So it was, yeah, it's a real shame didn't get to have it in that last game. Um, especially how they were like Braum waving by all of our units if we would have just had the Howling Abyss or even an Unyielding Spirit to keep one of them alive. Either one of those two would have been able to win the game, but we didn't get that 10% of the deck. Um, so I think that, I think like with this deck, I I was missing like the five and six mana cards that, that are really, really impactful. I think that's that's what we were missing in here. And honestly, like Trundle on paper, I thought that, you know, like Trundle would probably fit in here. Honestly, I didn't like it. I don't think that it did fit in here. I think the Trundle felt like it was worse than what other five and six mana options would have been for this deck. I think it, uh, it was just, it's pretty slow. Um, you know, like whenever we're drawing it as like the four, six regeneration, I don't, I think I would rather have, uh, I think I'd rather have Garen, honestly. Um, Sedge, if we're going with a, a frostbite card, I think I'd rather, or a Freljord card, I think I'd rather have Sejuani. I think Sejuani would put, put good pressure on them, get that frostbite vulnerable. I think, think that would help other, other things get through. I think I'd rather have either Garen or Sejuani over Trundle, um, Either one. With the thing about Garen, like they're both the re regeneration, but Garen works so well with single combat concerted strike, leveling up, getting you those extra attacks. I think I'd rather have either of those, and then, and then I think I would replace Egghead Researcher, as we were talking about, um, and I would just replace it with the other good five and six mana cards. And honestly, I'd probably just play, you know, either Cythria or Genevieve. I'd probably go. Genevieve, myself, one of those two, you know, I, this, uh, yeah, I think I'd rather go like this with Bannerman, but I like that, I like that, um, Howling Abyss, um, I like that, uh, that theory, I think that could work out pretty well, and Unyielding Spirit is honestly gotten a lot better right now, not many people are playing Hush anymore, I, nobody plays Ionia, so with the nerf of Hush, you know, since nobody plays Ionia and the nerf of Hush, um, Unyielding Spirit is is honestly this is a good Unyielding Spirit metagame. It's gotten a lot better, and there's there's a lot of like the last deck that we just played against. There's a lot of like Freljord, um, Shadow Isles, a lot of Shadow Isles control that can't really handle the Unyielding Spirit thing. Yeah, obviously there are decks that are Ionia, and obviously there are decks that play Hush, but those are are few and far between. You don't, I just, I don't run into those hardly at all, um, where where I'm at at least. You know, like it's like five percent of the games probably fine playing against either Hush or or uh, Ionia. Maybe ten percent. Maybe like yeah, maybe maybe one out of ten games is a Hush game. Maybe one out of ten is an I is a Leeson deck or a yeah or a fiora deck but um the 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 fiora ionia deck they don't really play will of ionia they don't play will of ionia so concerted strike still good against them so like that do that doesn't count because they don't play will of ionia yeah i think i think this is a good unyielding spirit metagame because before you're facing a, you know you're facing a lot more decks that could deal with it now you're looking at like five to ten percent of decks that can deal with it maybe but anyway, I think that that's a pretty interesting aspect to a Bannerman deck being able to play the Howling Abyss. I think that could be that could be pretty cool as a top end card. I wish wish we would have had it here. All right, but anyway, those y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. I'd really appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.